Welcome back everybody to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. Today I've got another episode of In The Loop for you because as I've been working on these vintage rings, I came across this particular interesting creature. No, no, this is not a new piece of bling for me. This is one of the rings that I'm going to retrofit, but it comes with a nice green stone, which you're tempted to consider an emerald. But one thing that a gemologist will tell you is that every stone is suspect until proven innocent. You can't just look at a color and say, yes, yes, I think that's natural. Find proof. So we're going to use our loop today and I'm going to tell you how I know that this is a deceiver. Is it an emerald? Yes. Is it? Well, let's find out. So we have our loop, we have our cloth, because again, we don't want any schmutz on that ring. And we also have a torch. And I'll explain the use of this one in just a moment, but the first thing I need to do is manage to get this ring off. Oh, it came off easily this time, how good. <laughs> Didn't even have to use any Vaseline or Crisco. So this particular vintage ring has a green stone in it, and if you go to a lab and you give them a stone to evaluate, and they put that down on their take-in slip, they're going to write green stone. If they write emerald, then that's not a good sign. And that's because they need to test it first before they are certain and brave enough to say this is an emerald. So, so let's start with the observation. We've got an interesting color here, but color doesn't necessarily tell us very much. So let's bust out our loop and see what we can see. In this ring, I can see something that's very typical in most emeralds, inclusions. Now what inclusions really? Because having inclusions doesn't mean anything. The types of inclusions are what give us a clue to the identity of this stone. And I actually see a very interesting type of inclusion that actually makes me quite suspicious. And the more you study gemology, you'll find there are a lot of fantastic names for inclusions. Things like wispy veils. How wispy are they? Now a wispy veil is basically a white, something like gauze or a veil that is long and stretched out. But instead of being a flat plane, a wispy veil is usually undulating and perhaps twisted. That's one of the things that we look for to give an idea of maybe this is a flux-grown synthetic emerald. But with 10 times magnification, it's not super clear. Is this a wispy veil? Are those veils twisted or are they not? So one thing that we can do to make this much easier is to take our torch. Unfortunately, this one will stand up on its own and I'm going to put the ring right on top of it. Now this transmitted light lights up the veil. The veils will catch that light and make them much easier to look at once I observe it with the loop. So now after observing it in transmitted light with my loop, I am confident that these are wispy veils. So if I'm in a situation where I'm asking myself, do I buy this ring or do I not? Am I buying it with the value of the stone or is the stone just thrown in? If I can just buy the mounting knowing that this is a synthetic stone, then that's still a good deal for me. If they're wanting a natural emerald's price for the price of this synthetic emerald, then I'm eh, maybe not. And again, that's something that I can find out with very simple tools like my loop and a flashlight in just a couple of seconds that will give me very important information for a buying decision. So if you've got any other questions about gemology or investing in gemstones, head over to gemshepherd.com where you can read more blogs about investing and gemology. Otherwise, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment down below if you've got a comment. And until next time, I'll say bye-bye. <laughs>